When it comes to photography, I like to try a little bit of everything. I've done a fair bit of digital photography and I've recently really fallen in love with film photography. I've shot a few rolls of 35mm film and wanted more of a challenge so I very quickly moved on to medium format film and today I'm going to be talking about medium format cameras on a budget and the different kinds of medium format cameras that are available on the market. So to start with we've got folding cameras. Now I'll be honest I've never shot on a folding camera purely because it's just not anything I've ever got around to shooting with. Now the main problem that I have with shooting with folding cameras, as I say this is probably the main reason that I've not shot on one, uh, is because of the bellows. So I actually have two here, I've got a few others on my shelf. But the main problem that you get with these folding cameras, and I don't know if it's going to show on camera, but you get tears in the bellows which can lead to light leaks which will mean that your photos aren't going to come out as they should because behind the lens, uh, the lens is a leaf shutter in most of these folding cameras uh, which means that the film's always exposed until the shutter opens on the lens so if there's any pinprick in your bellows there's going to be light constantly leaking onto the film itself unless the camera's closed and in a dark space like a camera bag so that's the main reason that I've never shot with folding cameras However, they are probably the cheapest way to get into medium format photography on the market. Uh, ranging from around literally 10 to 50 pounds. I wouldn't pay any more than that for one of these. But as I say, always check your bellows first, be it with a phone torch in a dark room. Just make sure you've got no pinpricks on your bellows before you go out and shoot with one of these cameras. So the next camera that I'm going to talk about are twin lens reflex cameras, or TLRs for short. And the two that I've got here are the Voigtlander Brillant and the Helena A1 and I've shot with both of these cameras and they're both very different to shoot with so starting with the Voigtlander the main problem that I had with this camera was focusing and the reason for that is there's two lenses on a TLR hence the name twin lens the top lens you view through so you actually see what you're going to photograph and the bottom lens is the one that actually captures the image uh, again, very similar to a folding camera, it has a leaf shutter, so the shutter's in the lens itself. And the reason that I had problem focusing with this one, on most TLRs, including the Helena, which I will show you shortly, the two lenses are geared together, so if you turn one to manually focus, which I can do with the bottom lens here, it would also be connected to the top lens and would turn with it meaning you can see what's in focus and what's not. With the Voigtlander, with it being a much older twin lens camera, I've literally just viewed through that. I have no idea of focus, so I'm focusing based on distance. And the first photo I took was what a shot of some Highland cows, which is this photo just here. And I guess worked it and it came out great. I don't know what my settings were. I exposed using my Canon camera that I had with me which is what I use most of the time that I shoot film as a light meter. I just carry a digital as well, which means I've got a reference shot with the settings that I'm using. An idea of distance for focus for cameras like this that don't have either prism finder or a geared lens that allows me to see the focus correctly. And just a, a general idea of what I'm looking at really. Uh, so the reason that I had trouble with this, the infinity focus on the lens is off by about a mile. So when I was shooting landscapes with this, they are completely blurred and out of focus and I'll put the two images that are out of focus up here. And the other problem that I had with this camera is actually the film type itself. So on twin lens cameras, this one in particular is 6x6, six six, which means it has a 055 times crop compared to 35mm and I'll put the ratio of the lens just here. It's shooting on a 7.5 centimeter lens or a 75 mil in modern terms. And the reason that I had pr trouble with the actual film type in this is because of the back just here. So there's a small kind of viewing screen on the back and that's the same on the Helena. This one has a little shutter over it. And that tells you how many shots you've got left on your film. The one on this camera is not where it should be. And I know that sounds strange because obviously I don't build cameras you would think it's in the right place. There's two meters, like for how many shots you have left on your film. There's one on the back of the medium format paper, 
and there's one on the side of the camera just here. And when I loaded the film in, I was using the rear screen to meet to actually meter the shots to know how many I'd got left, which is for I believe that one's working out at six by nine film. Whereas the one on the camera, which is just here, measures six by six. And as I was turning the film, when it said one here, it said one and a half on the front one, so I didn't know which meter to go with. So I actually only got eight out of my 12 photos when using this camera. That, besides that, it's a great camera to shoot with. I love the experience and I'm definitely gonna use it again. It is a bit more challenging trying to guess the distance that I'm shooting at, but it was really fun. The other twin lens camera that I've shot with is this here, and this is the Helena A1. So this has the nice geared lenses, so when, when I turn one, I turn the other, I know what I'm shooting, I can see if it's in focus, and it was a lot easier to shoot with. And the only problem that I had with this camera, which I again, I believe I got nine photos out of my 12, this is again six by six square, the only problem that I had with this was the uh, the winding knob this side. The screw inside there snapped, well, three quarters of the way through the roll of film. But again, this is a great camera to shoot with. And the main differences between this and the Voigtlander are the magnifier, which I can flip back on the top, so I can actually zoom into the image to make sure it's focused properly, and the main geared lens. And I'd recommend one of these over a Voigtlander if you are new to shooting medium format film, because it's, it makes the process a lot easier being able to see what's in focus and not having to guess it. And these range from, I think, about around 30 to 60 pounds um, for low end twin lens cameras, for higher end twin lens cameras, like the Mamaya C220 and the C330 you can be looking at up to three, four hundred pounds for one of those. They are very nice twin lens cameras with changeable lenses. So Mamaya actually introduced a lens system for their twin lenses, uh, which is interchangeable. So you can take the whole viewing lens and the photo taking lens off and mount a different focal length on there, which is a brilliant idea. And I don't own one of these, I really want one. So onto the last camera that I'm going to be talking about today and this one is a lot higher in budget. You can get something similar like a Kiev 88 for around three, four hundred pounds up to Hasselblad's which are around three thousand pounds. I've got something nice and in the middle. I've got this. This is probably the camera I've used most and I say most I've put the most amount of film through it. I've put three rolls through this one. I've put two rolls to the other two that I've shot with the two twin lenses. And I love shooting with this. So this is a, I class it as a medium format SLR. It's got interchangeable lenses, which I can change just like on a DSLR. I have two lenses for this. I have a 150 mil, which is what I've got on there now, which is my main lens. It's a portrait lens. And I've got a wider lens, which is a 50 millimeter lens. And I will put the crop ratio up here for those two lenses. And the reason I love shooting with this so much is because it's so modular, it's so nice to use. So the first modification that I've got on this is the hand grip, which has a winder, rather than using the crank to wind, as I don't actually have the crank handle. Um, I find this a lot easier to use, it's nicer to hold, it feels more like a DSLR when I'm holding that and being able to shoot with the button here rather than at the bottom, which is why I use it in this configuration. And there's also two tops for this. So you can do your standard top down, which again has a magnifier built in, which is great. You can see what's in focus, you can shoot waist level, it is great. If you want to shoot at head height, they do two different prism finders for this camera. There is a 45 degree prism finder and there is the one that I've got which is a vertical finder which looks... I can shoot the camera in aperture priority which is full control of the aperture. So with this on and in auto on this side and powered on on this side I can just control the aperture, the camera will show me inside what the recommended aperture would be and it controls the shutter speed and obviously your ISO is set via the film. 
So this is a really easy camera to use and this has cost me £700 for the kit. And I got this on a really good deal. These are actually worth about a thousand pounds with both of the top, with both of the finders and the lens. So I got a really good deal because I bought it off of someone that I know. But I love shooting with this camera just because of how versatile it is. You can really shoot it in any situation. It's rec cameras like this are recommended more towards studio photographers. However, I use this for street and got on really well with it. Another main selling point for a camera like this over a TLR or a folding camera is you can change your film type whilst shooting. So if you've got multiple of these film backs, you can have say a black and white loaded into one, colour film loaded into another, and it is literally a case of drop it on, pull out your dark card, and you're ready to shoot. With other medium format cameras, you spool the film into the back of the camera and that's the film you are stuck with until you fired your 12 shots. With this, I can literally just pop the back off, pop a new back on, and I've changed my film type from color to black and white or two different types of color film. So if you're testing different film for like the kind of color difference, this camera is great. Put it on a tripod, get, diff get a few different backs, put a different film into each, and just test all the different colors with exactly the same so shot. And it's just, I don't know how to describe this camera, but I really like it. And I'm definitely going to be shooting with this a lot more on the channel. But that's it from me. I'm going to leave you with some shots that I've shot on this Bronica. And I will see you next time. If you've got any questions about any medium format cameras or any 35 more cameras that you would like to ask, leave them in the comments and I will address them in another video. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. And I'll see you next time. Peace.